Hello everyone! If you're considering collecting public data from the internet with the help of web scraping and you're feeling overwhelmed by a lot of information about it, we can assure you that it's completely normal. Web scraping is challenging and there's a lot of information about it, so it's better to find out the most important aspects from the beginning. I'm Iveta, and with the help of our professional team, in this video, we'll answer the most common questions about web scraping. So, let's start with the most common question. Is web scraping legal? Simply put, there is no straight answer to this question. The legality of web scraping depends on various factors such as website terms of use or the type of data being scraped. Let me give you specific web scraping examples that are illegal. Your web scraper should not log in to websites and then download data. By logging in on any website, users must agree to the Terms of Service TOS, which may forbid activity like automated data collection. There may be fewer restrictions for scraping publicly available data as opposite to private information, but you still must ensure that you are not breaching laws that may be applicable to such data, for example, downloading copyrighted information. Even if data is needed for personal usage, the terms of service may forbid any kind of automatic data collection. If you have agreed to these terms of service, engaging in scraping activity could be considered a violation of terms and therefore may be illegal. We've prepared an article that covers this topic in depth, so be sure to check this video's description. Moving on from the legal aspect of web scraping, let's delve deeper into how web scraping works. Simply put, a web scraper sends a request to the website, downloads the page's HTML code, and then parses the code to extract the relevant public data. The web scraper can use different techniques to extract information, such as regular expressions, XPath, or CSS selectors. Once the public data is gathered, it can be saved in a structured format such as a CSV or JSON file or stored in a database. Python is one of the most popular languages for web scraping. Our technical team lead, Avida Svilchinskas, says that scraping and crawling are I.O.-bound tasks. As the crawler spends a lot of time waiting for a response from the crawled website, Python is well suited to handle these tasks as it supports multi-threading and asynchronous programming patterns. Moreover, Python is easy to write in and many libraries make it even easier to achieve almost any goal. Of course, if you're used to coding in other programming languages, it doesn't mean that you necessarily need to learn Python. For example, JavaScript, PHP, or Ruby can also be successfully used for web scraping tasks. Don't forget to check the description for a detailed article about programming languages for web scraping. There are various libraries for web scraping available, but let me list two top libraries for Python, JavaScript, and Ruby. So for Python, it's important to mention beautiful soup library that is used for parsing HTML and XML documents and extracting data from them. Requests for making HTTP requests. This library is used to retrieve HTML content from a website. Speaking about JavaScript, these two libraries stand out. Puppeteer for controlling headless Chrome or Chromium browsers and used for web automation, testing and scraping. Cheerio, a fast and flexible library for parsing HTML and XML documents and extracting data from them. If you're thinking of starting web scraping with Ruby, note these two libraries. Nokogiri is a Ruby gem for parsing HTML and XML documents and extracting information from them. Mechanize is used for automating interactions with websites. It can be used for web scraping by simulating the behavior of a web browser. Before continuing with the most popular questions about web scraping, make sure to like this video or subscribe to our channel for more similar topics. There are a few steps to identify the structure of a website. First, inspect the website's HTML source code using your browser's developer tools. Second, look for common patterns in the structure of the website's HTML tags, such as headers, paragraphs, tables, lists, or forms. Third, identify unique identifiers for the elements you want to scrape, such as class or ID attributes. Fourth, test your scraper by extracting a small amount of public data from the website to ensure it's properly configured to handle the site's structure and content. 
Fifth, refine your scraper based on any errors or inconsistencies you encounter in your initial tests. To handle dynamic content when web scraping, you can use tools like Selenium WebDriver or Beautiful Soup with Requests HTML, which allow you to interact with the website's JavaScript code and render the page dynamically. You may need to inspect the page's network traffic to identify the URLs used to load dynamic content and then use the appropriate API to, or endpoint to retrieve the public data you need. Also, you should set delays in your scraper to avoid triggering any rate limits or anti-scraping mechanisms. Web crawling refers to the automated process of visiting web pages and indexing them for later public data collection. Web scraping, on the other hand, is the process of extracting specific data from web pages. This is typically done by using specialized software to analyze the structure of a web page and extract data based on predefined rules. Check out our video where we explain this topic in depth. Some of the most common web scraping applications include price monitoring, where companies can use scraping tools to monitor competitor pricing and adjust their pricing accordingly. Market research is another popular use case where businesses can scrape public data from various sources to gain insights into industry trends and customer behavior. Travel companies gather public data from multiple airlines and hotels to provide users with the best possible deals on flights and accommodations. You can also extract real-time search engine public data to understand rankings and monitor your brand's visibility on search engines. If you have any questions or are interested in more web scraping applications, leave a comment below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. With the help of web scraping, you can gather textual information such as product descriptions, articles or reviews, as well as visual content such as images of products. It's also possible to scrape videos and audio files. But as I've mentioned in the beginning, you should respect each website's rules and make sure you're gathering publicly available and not copyrighted data. If I didn't answer your question about web scraping in this video, leave me a comment below or email us at hello at oxlabs.io and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and see you in other videos.